Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Aldarius Washington, Chris Westry, Anthony Avery, Deshaun Elliott. Oh, man, the last year was just so rough when it came to injuries with our corners and our safeties. So this offseason, the Ravens front office made some significant investments in fixing up that secondary in more ways than one because they addressed it in free agency and also via the draft. So to talk about this new and hopefully improved Ravens secondary, to talk about how they hopefully lock things up, I brought on a very, very special guest to simply answer the question, who passing the ball against us? Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, uh, we got a very special guest in the building, my guy Kevin Ostriker uh, from Locked On Ravens. Uh, so Kevin, before we get into it, tell everybody where to find you at on Twitter, your YouTube channel, uh, the podcast, all that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's great to be back on here with you, Engraven. And you can find me on Twitter at kostriker 34 I host and produce a Locked On Ravens podcast. You can find that on YouTube itself and also anywhere you get your podcast in audio form. And also the Locked On Ravens Twitter is at Locked On Ravens. I appreciate it. And I have everything down below in the description. Now, um, speaking of locked on, let's talk about this Raven secondary that hopefully locks up. How do you feel right here, right now about the Raven secondary as a whole, as a unit? Well, I feel a lot better than I did about their 2021 unit at the end of the <laughs> season. I mean, that unit last year, we've talked about it before where it just seems like every year the Ravens start with 50 million corners and then they end mm -hmm. the year with probably two healthy ones. And they have a lot of depth this year at least where we're standing right now for this team and i know it's only the middle of may but by the time 2021 or 2022 rolls around the actual start of the year maybe the ravens add another veteran but you have marlon humphrey you have marcus peters obviously the two stars of the cornerback room at least you obviously pair them with star safety and marcus williams you have chuck clark where at the time of this recording he's still on the team but again yeah. you never you, you never know everything's fluid and we know the rumors mm -hmm. with chuck clark so mm -hmm. i think for now you have the safety duo of williams and clark and then you throw in kyle hamilton that's a really nice top five when you're talking about actual depth not to mention the two rookie corners jalen moore davis and demarion williams you also have safety depth, veteran depth like Tony Jefferson, mm -hmm. Geno Stone. So I think that this team, that they pride themselves on their secondary. They have for a while. They invest big money, big draft capital in their secondary. And they showed that again this offseason. I think they did a pretty good job of retooling after a year where they saw that position get hit so hard with injury. That's true. That's a really, really good point. Now, we were sitting at pick 14. And Jordan Davis, he was the previous pick. He just got snatched up by the Eagles. Um, how did you feel when the Ravens selected Kyle Hamilton? I, I was over the moon. I thought the Eagles actually traded up to take Hamilton. I thought that was the play player they were going for. And it, it felt like if that was the case – for months, we were hearing about how Jordan Davis would be this, this mm -hmm. fit for the Ravens, and he would have been. He's a great player. I think he's going to do well in Philadelphia. But Hamilton, after the way the draft started, where it was not a lot of receivers were going, not no quarterbacks were going, it was a little difficult because all these top prospects that you kind of envision maybe the Ravens could trade up for, Kayvon Thibodeau, Slice Loss Gardner, all those guys, they're going off the board one after the other. Mm -hmm. Then the run on wide receivers happens, and you have yeah. a player like Kyle Hamilton, who we, we know this Ravens team is all about the best player available. And this was a pure best player available pick. And for me, it's a, it's a situation of you know going and taking the talent and figuring it all out later. And now mm -hmm. the Ravens are figuring it all out later because that you have the Chuck Clark situation and what was that going to look like? But mm -hmm. a player like Hamilton who can play multiple positions on a defense who you can really, the Ravens love their versatility lineup all over the place. Right. And someone who can be a 10, 12 year starter, really, really high quality, high level starter. That's someone, if you can get it 14, I mean, you take that 10 out of 10 times, you know, you no, know, he doesn't play offensive tackle. You know, he, he doesn't <laughs> play, he, he can't rush the quarterback like an outside linebacker can, but he is somebody who can really help this defense out. 
And really, when you plug and play him anywhere, I think that's something the Ravens value. All right, perfect. So um, you, you spoke about some different things that Kyle Hamilton can do. Uh, in your opinion, what would you say probably his biggest strength is as a safety? Or really as, just as a player as a whole? Yeah, yeah, the versatility is huge for him. And I think as someone who can really come and play up in the box, you can put him at the line of scrimmage. And just a high football IQ player overall. And it's something where when I watch his tape, I just I get the sense every time that, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's not a player that's out there guessing he can lead a defense. Now, obviously, with everybody in this defense now, I think Chuck Clark still holds the green dot, right? He's still right. the glue guy that holds him together. But I think maybe if, Clark ends up not being on the team week one. Maybe Hamilton, somebody who even as a rookie can contend for the green. Now I don't think yeah. he'll actually have it in that case. I think they'd go with a veteran option over Hamilton, but right. the football IQ is huge. You also have a player that again, can play deep play in the box. He can play some corner as well. I mean, all oh. over the place play up as a blitzer. And that's really where a chess piece for Mike McDonald, the Ravens, mm -hmm. they got him somebody who, you know, on Sundays, he can put anywhere on this football field. And I think overall, that's one of his biggest strengths overall, because we know just how much the Ravens like to do that. And especially with guys like Tyus Bowser, you don't really know that time frame in terms of when he's coming back. Mm -hmm. David Ajabo is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You have somebody who can maybe fill a void, not necessarily as, you know, a guy who's lining up, rushing the passer on every snap, but someone who can help that and just do different things. Mm. Okay. Good points. Now, on the flip side of that, what would you say is something that you, in your opinion, feels like he can get better at? Yeah, well, I don't know if this is something he can necessarily get better at, but I mean, in terms of his speed, I know there's been a big conversation in terms of, you know, his actual 40 time. And to me, look, 40 time, they're important, but they're not the be all end all. Like to right. me, if, if Kyle Hamilton fell to 14 because of his 40 time, his straight line, 40 yard dash combine time. I mean, I, I don't think that's really indicative of what he brings as a player. And mm -hmm. I think teams will regret that decision if that ends up being what it is. But when I, when I look at the tape, he plays faster than his 40 time. And so, well, is he, is he the fastest four two safety in the, in the world? No, he's not. And that's maybe one thing where you maybe you'd like to have him have a little more speed, but he plays faster than the time he put out at the combine and I know a lot of people were talking about, well, he's not worthy of a top 10 pick because he can't run that 40 fast. And there's so much stock put in the combine, mm -hmm. I think now. And a That's lot of true. people, a lot of teams value it differently. And it depends on just where they put that as an organization. I think the Ravens, they they made the right call here by kind of throwing out that 40 time and saying, hey, look, this player's done so much on the football field. But, you know, maybe you'd like to see a little more speed out of Kyle Hamilton. But at this point, I'm, I'm not knocking him for that. I feel like he just, he makes up for that in so many other ways that was absolutely worth this pick. Yeah, man, that, that that's true. That, uh, that 40 time can change the game for literally anybody. Now, um, you spoke about it briefly earlier. Ravens, of course, got Kyle Hamilton. They signed uh, Marcus Williams uh, to hold down that other safety role. Chuck Clark is to be determined on if he remains with the team or not. Uh, Marcus Peters, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, uh, Ardarius Washington. Um, of course, the two rookies that the Ravens drafted, Tony Jefferson, Geno Stone, who you mentioned earlier as well. Who's throwing on this Ravens secondary if they're healthy? Like, because it, it, it just... If Ravens can just be healthy, if they can remain healthy, and I know that's a big, big if, especially like you mentioned earlier in the secondary, because like you said, every year they start off, they have so much depth in the secondary. It's like, OK, let's go. We got it. And then every year it ends up being something. Now, last year it ended up being a, too much of something. But um, who's throwing on the secondary if everybody stays healthy? Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't think a lot of people and when looking at it, I think a an extension of the secondary is the pass rush. And that's going to be key for them as well this year, because obviously when you're an NFL secondary or just a football secondary in general, being asked to cover for four, five, six, seven seconds, each mm -hmm. second you're asked to cover, there's a more likely percent chance that the quarterback will find somebody, someone will break loose or something will happen. So for the Ravens, I think having a good pass rush this season will help out so much. And, you know, we, we've heard of the term covered sacks. Well, also that there's a lot that goes into, I think, not having completions happen in, I'd say, a 
two, three second span when literally the pass rush gets to the quarterback. And if a secondary can cover for a solid two, three, four seconds, every time, if you have that quality pass rush on top of that, it, it just makes life so, so difficult. And I think the Ravens have done a lot to address that pass rush. Now they haven't done everything right. The outside linebacker position, you're mm-hmm. still kind of wondering with Tyus Bowser and obviously David Ajabo, do they bring back Justin Houston? It feels like with that tender being applied to him, it yeah. feels like it, but you, you never know, you know, nothing is set in stone. Travis, Jones, I think, will provide an interior pass rushing presence. Hopefully, Clayus Campbell will be able to come in and maybe with his snaps kind of manage a little bit more. He played so many snaps last mm-hmm. season. If he has a snaps manage, he can do that as well. But I think if you have the Ravens secondary fully healthy, if you have a great pass rush, this defense mm-hmm. will be able to bounce back in a big way. But again, it, it does come down to health. A lot of stuff, I mean, a lot of stuff around success comes down to health. You look at the two yeah. teams last year who made the Super Bowl. It was the Rams and it was the Bengals, two teams that – Overall, I mean, they definitely did have a couple injuries, but mm-hmm. when compared to the rest of the league, they, they were in the top part of health. So mm-hmm. I think the Ravens, it, it takes a little luck. Every team takes a little luck to get to the big game, get to the Super Bowl. But I think the Ravens have positioned themselves a lot better this offseason. They still could add a veteran corner if they wanted to. You know, mm-hmm. obviously outside of Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, you're looking at young guys. You mentioned Brandon Stevens, mm-hmm. Darius Washington, the two rookie guys there as well. But I think overall, the, the secondary is something that I think healthy is a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Um, and I think really, if you compare any teams to the Ravens last year, then they they were super healthy. Uh, well, minus the Titans, because I know they went through it as well. Um, with that being said, uh, the pass rush. Talked about the pass rush because, yeah, the pass rush, they would make they make the secondary's job so much easier. But that fair way, uh, heading into his second year, uh, Justin Houston, it's expected that he's back. It's not 100% certain yet. Um, but I, I wouldn't expect anybody to give him a, a, a bigger deal offer than um, that tender that he got from the Ravens, which is this is literally the first time that I've ever heard of that tender before for uh, a, a, an unrestricted free agent. I've never seen that ever before. Um, so this was the first for me with that. Um, I wouldn't mind a Jadavian Clowney, but I know it's, it's not going to happen. So that's just a little pipe dream <laughs> right now. But as far as the pass rush, um, are you confident that they can really take that next jump? I am. I, I do think it's a position where you look at the depth right now and the Ravens, they brought in Vince Beagle and he's someone to me who's not, he can play inside and outside. I don't view him as a pass rusher though. I think he's more of a special teamer. You have Adafi always you mentioned. I, I, ha- I predict a huge second year for him. Daylon Hayes, I think, can be relied on a bunch. You know, even at this point, Jalen Ferguson, it feels like, is going to have a decently big role. But I think a sneaky player at the pass rush or who could pass rush a lot more than people anticipate is Malik Harrison. I think someone mm. who I don't think you have maybe in on every single third down situation. But in terms of John Harbaugh saying that he's going to be cross-training at the same position, mm-hmm. maybe you have him in there on first down and you're able to have him. And he, he's a player that I think he, he go, even going back to Ohio State, he, he did play up a lot. And he has that versatility, not just to play inside linebacker, but also to play down a little bit and have an impact. So while I don't think, again, he's going to be this 15 sack guy right. with the Ravens depth right now, again, you just, you never know with the Achilles injuries with, you know, all these lower leg injuries in general, just when guys mm-hmm. will come back. So while you'd like to have Ty Spouser back week one, while you'd like to have David Ajabo back, you, you can't rely on that if you're the Ravens, because again, we, we saw them get burned by that exact thing with Ronnie mm. Stanley where Mm -hmm. you kind of anticipate like, oh, we'll be okay because we're getting the star player back. But then if the star player is not ready to go, you're you're kind of in a hole. So I think bringing back Justin Houston knows the system. I think actually pretty underrated last year by a lot of people just because the sack Mm -hmm. totals weren't necessarily there. I think he'd be good. You have O.A., Hayes, Ferguson, who obviously admittedly hasn't shown a ton since being drafted. But I don't know, maybe this is the year it took Ty Spouser a couple of years to get his legs under him in the league. So Mm -hmm. you never know. It just comes later to some. But I think a big key is also on the interior. Obviously, uh, talking about Travis Jones, Mm -hmm. Derek Wolf. you know, what's his status going to be this year? Is he going to play for them? Clays Campbell, you have players there, Justin Matabike as well, someone who I anticipated was going to have a huge second year, didn't really turn out that way. But you you had 
uh, I think another year under his belt, or even Brodsick Washington, who I thought impressed me in some, in some mm, yeah. different aspects. So I think the depth is there for the pass rush to be successful. It's just a matter of executing and maybe bringing in one or two more guys, whether that is Houston and somebody else. But uh, I think bringing in at least the Houston is pretty important for them at this point. Ooh, yeah, that's true. Now, we talked about the uh, the front end, the front seven. Uh, we talked about the back end with the corners and the safeties, but what about the nucleus of the Ravens defense right now? How are you feeling about that? I, I think they're I think they're good overall. The, the defense as a whole, I know there there is a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths based off of just the huge games that they gave up, especially later in the year, and even later in the year, talking about the the blown leads, you know, the failed executions in the fourth quarters. And a lot of that did have to do with injuries, but we have seen some turnover on this defense. You know, you're bringing in guys like Marcus Williams in place of Deshaun Elliott, Kyle Hamilton coming in there, but you have veteran leaders in there too. And I think obviously right. assuming Justin Houston is back, that's one of them, but you have Clayus Campbell, you have Josh Bynes who's back as well, but you also have young guys who are starting to learn their roles at this league, Patrick Queen, someone who had a very, very up and down year in 2021, right. you know, but mm -hmm. I think improved over the course of the season and bounced back in a big way. So that's a player that, you know, I anticipate to keep growing and growing and growing, but you have Marlon Humphrey and obviously the guys I mentioned earlier, Campbell Bynes and others as well. Chuck Clark, someone who's a huge, huge leader on that defense and someone mm -hmm. who, again, I personally hope stays in a Ravens uniform. I think having three safety looks with Clark and Hamilton and Williams is just so it's just so amazing to think about. But I think when looking at the defense as a whole, I'm confident they can bounce back. I think last year, again, just injuries, poor execution. They understand. And we saw some of the things that they weren't good at early in the year get a bit better. Now, admittedly, other issues popped up. But the tackling, huge issue early on. I think it got cleaned up a little bit as the season went on. You know, we kind of saw that. Yeah. Go kind of better for them. Miscommunications. There were still mm -hmm. a couple of them throughout the rest of the oh, year, but I think yeah. we, we saw them get cleaned up a little bit based off of every week early mm -hmm. in the year. It was how many miscommunications are going to be this <laughs> week? It, Cause it was, it was like two, three, four. So oh, yeah, it, was bad. It, it got a little bit better towards the end of the season. So I'm confident they can bounce back. I'm obviously very confident in Mike McDonald as well. Someone who I think will be a nice, nice change of pace thing. I, I think there mm -hmm. will still be things from Don Martindale's defense that yeah. will continue to be there. But I think overall McDonald was a great hire and someone who I think will be able to, to excel this defense further than where they were last year, which I know isn't a very high standard based, <laughs> off, of, based off of what happened. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm confident what this defense can do. Mike McDonald, new defensive coordinator, like you mentioned, if healthy, do you think this Ravens defense is top 10? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? I'm going to say, let's go bold. I'm going to say yes, top 12 at the very lowest for mm -hmm. me. Let, let's, let's go with that. I think people forget how good this Ravens defense was when it was healthy. And I know, obviously, this is a what have you done for me now lately league. Yeah. And people do forget, and I understand that. You know, th this team last year, the defense wasn't very impressive in a lot of different aspects. But fully healthy, you have time to gel with your teammates. A lot of it also was just like guys were playing with new guys every week. It, it mm. was in practice. They were like meeting guys for the first time and like mm. figuring out everything. So I think continuity would be huge. But yeah, oh, I'm yeah. going to go bold. There are a lot of great defenses across this league. There are a lot of good defenses. But I think Baltimore can be one of them, especially if they can stay healthy. Yeah, for me, I, I think they would definitely be top 10. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just health. Uh, if they're healthy, they have their Marcus Peters, they have their Marlon Humphrey, uh, they have their new safeties and whatnot. And, and yeah, like you said, uh, continuity, that's that's one of the biggest things because uh, it was just a rotation like everywhere all year long. Uh, and that doesn't help anything. Um, speaking of defense, one of the biggest helps uh, to a great defense is a great offense. Uh, Ravens, of course, have Lamar Jackson. Expected to get J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards back and Justice Hill. They drafted uh, Beatty. They signed Mike Davis. Uh, and we know not all the running backs are going to make the roster, but right now they have some depth heading into training camp. Um, at tight end, they, of course, have Mark Andrews, who was probably the best tight end in football last year. Um, they just redid Nick Boyle's contract to get a little salary cap space, so he obviously isn't going anywhere. And they drafted uh, Kala and Likely. Um, offensive line. Uh, Daniel Falele, they they drafted him. They also brought in uh, Tyler Linderbaum at center. 
Uh, hopefully, Ronnie Stanley, he's back fully healthy. Uh, they retained Jawan James, which I was surprised about, but I'm not mad at it because, hey, the more the merry, especially on a long offensive line. Uh, Patrick McCary, he's still going to be around. Um, and, of course, Tyree Phillips, he goes into another year. Hopefully, he continues to improve. Um, and they signed Morgan Moses as well. Uh, but then there's one position. You know, I, I could talk about this position all day. <laughs> There's one position where Ravens, uh, there's a lot of divisiveness right now amongst Ravens fans on exactly what they should do. Because they they traded away Hollywood Brown. Uh, they released Miles Boykin. Uh, Sammy Watkins became a free agent. And, and we knew, like, before the season was over, we knew Sammy Watkins wasn't going to be back. But how do you feel and what do you feel? Because I love getting pe different people's perspective on this. What do you feel that the Ravens should do at the wide receiver position because the draft is gone. The first wave of free agency is gone. What do you feel like the Ravens should do at wide receiver right now? Should they roll with their guys that they have? Should they add a veteran as a free agent? Or should they trade for somebody? What do you think they should do? It's such an interesting question. And there mm -hmm. are so many different opinions on it. Because there are so many routes they could go with it. But you made a good point in the fact that look, this isn't the first wave of free agency anymore. This isn't March. You don't have those top end wide receivers who are on the market in March on the market now. It just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. But I think that me personally, I would have the Ravens sign a veteran wide receiver, but without the expectations that, all right, this is going to be the number one guy. This is going to be okay. a guy for a thousand yards. And I think for how young the room is right now with the wide receiver position for the Ravens, you have two third year guys and two second year guys at so the top four, obviously being Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, James Perche, and Tyler Wallace. I think those mm -hmm. four guys are right now, if, if the Ravens don't touch anything and they roll with the guys they have, those four guys, I'm confident in them. I think they can all do really great things in this offense, but I think mm -hmm. to have a veteran presence in the locker room at that position, someone who has a lot of experience, who's been around the league, and veterans too, you know, they they know how to work back to a quarterback when they're in trouble. They know mm -hmm. how, it, how different cornerback matchups work because they've been in the league for a while. They've gone up against some of these top flight defenses, top flight coaches. And again, I'm not saying that Rashad Bateman can't work back to Lamar Jackson when he's in trouble, right? He's a, he's a receiver. He can do that. I, he's a good player. But I think another thing to this whole th part is right now, if the Ravens were to, again, not touch anything as enter the year with the guys they have on their roster, the question to me is how many running backs, how many wide receivers, and how many tight ends the Ravens keep on the roster? Because mm. you mentioned a little earlier the running back depth they have, and they have a lot of it. But in the offense that I feel like with the personnel they have, they take two tight ends and, and no wide receivers in the draft, and they, they're kind of rolling with their guys, it seems like, if that's the case. Maybe the Ravens keep four running backs, four tight ends, and five wide receivers and go back to more of that bully ball type offense, which I, I do think the Ravens, a team that in 2019 and 2020 had the both both years, the least amount of pass attempts in the NFL in both those seasons. 2021, they went up to ninth, and obviously a lot of that, I think, had to do with injuries. Mm -hmm. But I think what we saw over the first part of the year before, obviously, the collapse happened was the pass offense looked better. It looked improved than it did mm -hmm. in 2019 and 2020. So if they can sure build did. off of that, you bring in a guy like a Julio Jones or Will Fuller, T.Y. Hilton, all players that I think you have to account for missed time with, much like I think a lot of people did with Sammy Watkins. A lot of the concerns mm -hmm. surrounding Sammy Watkins and his signing when it first happened was, well, he's going to miss games. And he ended yeah. up missing games. Mm -hmm. And I think really impacted his ability. And I know the Miami game, the, the catch where oh, he's going to run into the goal post, a, a sore topic I know. And he it is nope. it is for me. Not yeah, he's like, not, not today. <laughs> I, I think for me, if you can bring in still, if you can get, oh, I don't know, 13 good games out of Julio Jones or 10 good games out of Wolf Fuller. And you know, that's what's coming. If you can prepare for that, you have mm -hmm. guys on the practice squad. The Ravens also brought in talented undrafted free agents, guys mm -hmm. like Benjamin Victor and Jalen Moore are still there. You know, these aren't necessarily household names in the fact that, you know, DK Metcalf, it's not, it's not him. It's not Debo Samuel. I think they could look for a trade option as well, but I think having a veteran in that room is very important for experience and also just for somebody who can, help Lamar Jackson out. But I think the talent that they have at the wide receiver room now with those top four guys, I, I like all of them and I'm excited to see what they can do. Now that's funny. You mentioned uh, Julio Jones and Will Fuller, T.Y. Hilton as well. I've seen some suggestions that say the Ravens, they should sign like three of them. They should sign all three because 
that could guarantee that you get a full 17 game season out of them as a combination of one. Because you know they're each going to miss some time, but they're not all three going to be injured at the same time, so might as well. But anyway, to my guy, KO, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, one more time, let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, for sure, man. This is always so fun hopping on talking football with you. For me, you can find me on Twitter, ChaosTracker34, and also the Lockdown Ravens podcast is on YouTube and also anywhere you can find your podcast in audio form in the Lockdown Ravens Twitter mm -hmm. is at Lockdown Ravens for show updates. All right, and hopefully, like, he's locked on Ravens. Hopefully, these will be the lock-up Ravens. All of his information will be down below in the description, and we out.